those two views to consider and ponder ideas is not a new concept or a new view. and something I imagine you've been a lover of for a great deal of time in some form. Um, I was also appreciative of the passage that you shared. I believe it was John 17. Uh, the, the concept of I am in you and you are in me. And so that I'm going to share two different uh, pieces of work today, but that specifically brought me to want to share this first piece. Um, so I began my descent unto a brazen path with a love I had for myself is the only love that seems to last. Sights, sounds, and the people I see, they are a reminder that y'all are a reflection of me. I met this student one day. In school, she was trying to stay worried about maintaining that GPA and struggling to understand the things the professors would say. She didn't get to play. She was studying all day, but it was all good to her. She was determined to make her way. No camaraderie found with the other women in her class. She didn't seem to fit in. They always seemed to have more cash, but she was on her path, trying to stay focused. What she saw back at home is what challenged her the most because no one really cared that she was going to school. No one else thought Michelle from Cole was cool. No one else to share in the lessons of her day. It seemed like no one that was around her had anything of value left to say. She was alone and lonely. And it seemed to me like she was always being phony, either faking for her classmates or faking for her homies. I grabbed her and I reminded her, it's okay to just be you. Don't yeah. try to impress these people. To our own self, we must be true. Yeah. I be you, you be me, we be she, and she is beautiful. I kept it moving to the bus stop, seeing Jeannie with the sunlight gleaming into her eyes. Her silver bangles were jingling as they bumped against her thighs. Her hair was done up and her makeup was tight, all to mask the pain of what she goes through every night. This car pulls up. Hey, yo, look at the legs on short. She doesn't even know to get offended because she's gotten so used to feeling dirty. Hey, little mama, come on, show me what you got. And this attention, it's got her thinking that she's hot. Two hours later, ex exchanging sex for some pot and the diseases they got. They don't make her stop. She's not thinking about the clinic while she's trying to make it pop. She carries a fake coach bag loaded with rough riders and the list is long with men that have been inside her though no one provides for her or stands by her side for her. So she uses sex to try to fill a hole that resides in her. Wish that they missed her. They all just really just her, gassed her up, passed her around, totally dismissed her. No one was around and she was in need, yet she'd still let them be inside of her in hopes of producing a seed, a baby. A dependent. She wanted to be a mother so she could be the creator of something that would truly love her, even though the most lovable parts of herself, this youngster, had yet to discover. She'd find herself getting wistful as she'd feel him slipping off his rubber. Even though it's good for your soul to love something that you can't control, security from stability is something she has yet to know. She has found a place to rest, but she has never found a home. She has been chewed on and spewed on. It seems she roams this earth alone. I felt her pain as I caught her winking back, never considering these suitors or the chivalry they lacked. She puckered up her lips. She turned and revealed how her jeans hugged her hips and I wanted to try to save her before she jumped in this car and dipped because I knew they'd get her giddy off her. Just a few quick sips, so I grabbed her by the hands. I looked her in the eye and I said, girl, that you are far more valuable than anything that they could buy. The way that they're speaking, it's just not suitable. I be you, you be me, we be she. She is beautiful. I don't know if she believed me. I continued on my way. I prayed for her and liking it that maybe she'd understand one day that maybe she'd be like Marsha, who saw the brightness of the light that shone from deep inside of her when she started treating herself right. She quit smoking, learned to do Taibo, found herself with idle time into the library she would go, filled her mind with as much information as it could take, observed all people, and without judgment, learned from their mistakes. She prayed every day mostly to herself that she would continue to find the strength to consider her mind her greatest wealth. She found friends in people like-minded. She understood most stories get told one-sided. 
She created change through discussion. She appreciated her blessings. She tried to take all her mistakes as opportunities for lessons, so I called her one day, and I told her something unusual. I told her I'd be you. You be me. We be she. She is beautiful. Man. They walk with me as I continue on my journey, weathered and war-torn and sometimes a little weary. The world can get scary. Everything isn't always clear. But I'm learning to face my path with the brave absence of fear, constantly contradicting myself, forever reinventing myself, testing myself, condensing myself, but consistently striving to find the best in myself. Things change and they seem to be getting harder, but really it's getting easier, because baby, I'm just getting smarter. Amen. Realizing that I am a part of a blanket that keeps me wrapped in karma. I look in the mirror now, I smile at my reflection. I'm thankful every day for another resurrection. I am my sister's keeper. I reap the benefits of her protection. Together we fight to challenge society's perception of women that only relate to each other with lies and deception. So when my sisters wish to gossip, they are met with my refusal. I tell them I'll be you. You be me. We be she. She's a kid. Amen. 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 Amen.